Hi, my name is Dave Clark. Today we'll talk about the Black Hawk War and Indian removal in Illinois. This war was one of the smaller skirmishes, but it was very consequential in its message to the indigenous people, especially in its last battle. And that was really more of a slaughter. The Sauk and Meskwaki had settled in the area between the Mississippi and Illinois rivers, and to the east were the Potawatomi near Lake Michigan. At first, Britain wanted to preserve the fur trade with the indigenous folks, so there was a royal proclamation that colonists along the east coast were forbidden from settling west of the proclamation line. West of that was to remain Indian territory. In 1804, with the Treaty of St. Louis, Quashquami would say they had no recollection of signing a treaty, certainly not one with terms that could only be agreed to by a full tribal council. The treaty gave up all the lands shown in yellow on this map. Sauk and Meskwaki were allowed to remain until white settlement would require them to move. But in 1831, Black Hawk was warned that he was going to be forcibly removed, so the group leaves in order to avoid a battle. That winter, due to insufficient food resources, many of their group faced hunger and starvation. So on April 5, 1832, Black Hawk led a group of 1,500 back into Illinois. 1,000 are women and children. At the end of the battle of Wisconsin Heights, Black Hawk had sent word to the U.S. troops that he was not fighting anymore, simply retreating across the river. But the U.S. forces had decided to pursue to make an example out of Black Hawk and his forces. At least 250 members of the British band were killed, including about 110 who drowned while trying to cross the river. The encounter was, in the words of one historian, less of a battle and more of a massacre. So please join me for more about the Black Hawk War and Indian removal in Illinois.